story that I'm about to tell you is about when my brother got killed. And the night he got killed, I was doing the same thing. I was reading the Bible. And I knew that it was telling me something was going to happen to my brother. Like a few days before that, my brother had been getting shot at. Every time, I can't even say shot at, but it seems like every time he was around, gunshots was going off. And I kept saying, like, do this seem like they're shooting at you? That happened like two or three times. And I said, do it seem like they're shooting at you or you just hearing gunshots? And he was like, I don't know. I don't know, but I feel like it's got something to do with me. So I'm like, all right. So that night, I'm reading the Bible and it's, I felt like it was telling me something was going to happen to my brother. So... I said, I got to start chilling with him more. I'm going to start taking him with me. Like when I dip off, I used to dip the Queens and go out there and, you know, I used to hustle out there. So I said, I'm going to start taking him out there. I lived in Brooklyn on Lexington Avenue. I said, I'm going to start taking him out there with me. But that didn't happen because that night I told you my friend came to pick me up and my friend like took me to chill with him. And while we were gone, in between that time, my brother got killed. But even before that happened, I'm going to tell you what led up to that happening. Uh, like maybe a year before that happened, I'm sitting in, at the house. It's me and a few girls and a friend of mine. We had a studio on this block. The name of the studio was called The Spot, right? Now, I, um, I told you that your boy came through there. But just for the people, listen, I told you this um, before. But for the people that's listening to the story, a friend... Um, a dude named the dude Jizza from the Wu-Tang Clan. He came through there before they started popping. He had already had his solo album out and stuff. He came through there before they started popping. And he came on that block after he just said he just got into a little situation. And he was telling us about it. But anyway, he, he, he got introduced to me because somebody told him like, yo, they got a studio over there and they be rhyming and stuff. And they knew he was into that. So me and him outside, we had a little back and forth rhyming thing. And he was like, yo, let me check the studio out. So I bought him in the crib. You know, he had, um, like, he had his fire on him and everything from the situation he just had. So I bought him in the crib and you know, he listening to beats and stuff and we in there rhyming. And a friend of mine was in there too that came from Queens. And we all sitting in there smoking and shit. And Jizzle was like, um, yeah, man, we got a situation about to take place. You know what I'm saying? We got this group that's about to pop, you know, the Wu-Tang Clan. We working on that shit right now. And it's going to pop soon. You know what I'm saying? We got like a lot of attention coming from it. But at this time, I hadn't heard nothing about it. So I'm like, all right, yeah, that's what's up. You know, everybody and their mother was trying to rhyme at this time. This was um, 92. So everybody doing music and, you know, you hear that all the time. Even myself, like I said, we had a little studio. We was rhyming and everything. And um, I heard him, but, it, you know, it was just, all right, that's what's up. So anyway, um, he wound up dipping off. And probably about, I would say a few months after that situation, after that night, we heard that song, Protect Your Neck. And I didn't even relate it to that dude. Because I heard him, but I didn't hear him. My man that was there was like, yo, ain't this the dude that was at your house that night that was saying they had some shit coming? And I'm like, nah, that nigga name was Genius, like Genius a rapper or something. He was like, nah, that nigga Jizza, that's him. You know what I'm saying? That's the same dude that was at your crib, the dude that's calling himself Jizza. So we wound up finding out that that was him. And that's when Wu took off, and I'm like, damn, that's crazy. And then when he dropped his solo album, it, I, I'm pretty sure that song where he did Cold World, he was talking about that same damn night. And... It seemed like he gave a little nod to the studio because I told you the name of our studio was The Spot. And in the end of that song, he was like, um, blasting like recipients, cashing checks again, something like that, back to that motherfucking spot on Lexington. And that's where our studio was at. It was the, na the name of the studio was The Spot and, the, and the, um, the block that we stayed on was Lexington. But it also could have been in reference to his peoples, his peoples was my was this dude that stayed next door to me like a few houses down and they had a spot over there they used to swing out of that spot and i was cool with the dude that ran the spot and i was cool with the dude that he had out on the block right there this other nigga his name was f f was a cool ass dude and i used to sit there and build with him all the time because he was guard body and we used to talk about some powerful stuff so me and him was real cool so fast, fast forward to when the situation is happening with my brother I go to these dudes and I'm hollering at them like, yo, it seemed like some stuff is going on with my brother. And they was like, nah, 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 it ain't nothing going on with him. You know what I'm saying? Like, your brother good, your brother good. 
But I was like, it seemed like every time he outside, there's some shots being fired. Like, y'all know anything about that? And they like, nah. But what happened was, like I said, one day I'm sitting on the stoop. And next thing you know, my brother come running to the house. And he was like, yo, yo, he got a gun. He got a gun. And I'm like, who? I look and I see two dudes coming behind him. So we dip into the crib. And I'm like, I'm telling all of them, go out the back. Go out the back. So I'm trying to lock the door. At the same time that I got all of them in the house and I slammed the door, the two dudes is in my yard and they're coming up to the door. And one of the dudes is pulling out a gun. And like he's lifting it up to point it at the door. So I'm like, damn. When I tried to hit the lock the first time, the door didn't lock. So I started to run, but I said, nah, if I run, we might as well say we all gonna get killed up in here because the door is not locked and they got a free pass to come in. So I felt like I'm about to get shot, but I'm gonna lock this door just to make sure that, you know, everybody else get out safely. So I turned back and I hit the lock again. The second time I hit it, that joint locked and I was waiting for shots to come through the door. Cause like I said, he was raising the gun as I saw him coming up the steps. So I locked the door, but no shots came through. I ran to the back and I'm about to climb out the back window where everybody else had already went out except for one dude. That was my dude who had the studio. It was his studio. And he was there, and he was like, yo, I don't hear nothing, I don't hear nothing. And I was like, I'm going back up front to check, you know what I'm saying? And he was like, nah, you, you sure? And I was like, yeah, I don't hear nothing, them niggas ain't come in. Let's just go back up there and see what's up. So I go back up there, and I look out the window, and I see the dude standing out front of the gate. And he got our gate, and he's just, like, bending the gate to my yard, like, shaking the shit back and forward, like, trying to break the shit. So I open the door, and I'm like, yo, what's up? And he was like, nah, don't ask me what's up. Ask your brother what's up. He know what's up. He know what's up. So I said, he don't know what's going on. I already asked him what happened and why was y'all chasing him? Because I did ask my brother that. And my brother was like, he don't know. He don't know these niggas from a can of paint. So I'm like, so I'm asking you, what's up? Like, why y'all chasing my brother? And what's, why are you sitting there breaking my gate? So he was like, yo, only on the strength of the fact that you cool with my peoples. And this is how I found out that they was connected to the spot. He was like, only on the strength of the fact that you cool with my peoples that got the spot next door. I'm going to tell you. And he was like, the other night, your brother came out the house. I'm sitting on the car with a shorty. And he walked by us. And he going to tell, he going to say some old slick shit out of his mouth. And I'm like, what he said? And he said, you know that song? At the time, that song was out, um, Cut That Zero, Get With This Hero. Who was that? Dougie Fresh or somebody? I forgot who the song was by. Or was it Grand Poob in them? But anyway, he was singing a song. And these, he felt like he was saying it to him. And he said, I started to say something to him that night. But the girl that I was with grabbed me and was like, chill. He was sitting between her legs, but he was like, that was my sister. But in his mind, he must have thought it was my shorty or something because I'm sitting between her legs and she had her arms around my neck. But he was like, but that was my sister. And he said, that slick shit. And I started to check him, but my, my sister told me, chill. He was like, that nigga drunk, damn alone. But I felt like that was a violation. And my brother's standing right there now listening to the story. And my brother was like, yo, that's a motherfucking lie. And he was like, no, it ain't no lie, nigga, it's the fucking truth. And a nigga with the gun is just standing there off to the side, like looking up and down the street, looking like he just ready for whatever, whatever. So he was like, it ain't no motherfucking lie, nigga, that's the truth. It was right here, you was drunk as a bitch, how you gonna tell me? And my brother looked at me, he's like, yo, sell this nigga lying. And he's fronting because we came on this block, we, ain't, we don't know nobody, we don't really fuck with niggas around here, but he could tell we get money. And we chilling. We have we, we used to have bitches and all that shit at the crib. Like we used to have shorties coming over all the time. And you know we was kind of chilling, but we wasn't hustling on that block or nothing. And he was like, they're trying us. They're trying to like make a statement to try to say, see where we at. And I'm like, nah, like we don't fuck with nobody. So why would they be doing that? And he was like, sell. I'm telling you, this nigga's lying. So the dude was like, I'm not fucking lying. And I'm like, yo, hold up. Like, all right, fuck it. Bottom line. What's going on with this situation? And he was like, again, I'm going to say this like this. On a strength for the fact that you my, my people's peoples, I'm going to leave this shit alone. But tell your brother don't say shit to me no more. Because I felt like he crossed the line. And I was like, all right, that's what's up. I was like, yo, you cool with that? He said, I never said nothing to this nigga in the first place. But all right, it is what it is. So we did that. The nigga leaving everything. And my gate is fucked up and shit. So I'm sitting there talking to my brother and he started telling me again the same thing. He was like, yo, sir, we've been over here for a second. We don't fuck with nobody. We chilling. You know, we, we stay fly. 
jewelry and everything. And my brother at this time, you know, my brother was getting high, you know, so he was in the streets a lot. So these niggas, he, he said, that's why they're trying me because they know I'm the link that they feel like they can get to to, to try y'all through me because they know I get drunk sometimes. They know I do my thing as far as getting high. That ain't no secret. So I'm listening to him, but at the same time, I'm also listening with both ears. I'm like, I know how my brother is. When my brother is drunk, he remembers shit. He even like explained that shit. He was like, nah, sell that night. And he told me what happened from his version. He said, I remember that night. I wasn't drunk where I don't remember what happened. He said, I didn't say nothing to them. I walked by them singing, didn't even look at them. I saw them sitting there, but didn't even look at them. They back was to me when I walked that way. They was facing the same way I was walking. I was going to the store. He said, I didn't even look at them as I passed them. I just kept going. That's a, so, that was a dangerous song, though, back in the days. Back. Like, back that shit. A nigga, he felt, a nigga felt like he trying them. Yeah. So, he, um, he said, you know, there's no way in the world he could have thought I was talking to him. Or if he did, he could have easily said, yo, who you talking to? He didn't have to try to confront me on no negative shit. And I would have just told him, nah, nigga, it ain't that. And I'm just saying. But anyway, he was like, I felt like they trying us, L. But anyway, so I let the shit ride. I was like, yo, fuck it. If they do, then we're going to have to do what we do. But if not, leave the shit alone. Don't say nothing to them niggas. And he just said he ain't going to say nothing to you. He was like, all right, cool. So I wind up dipping that day. I'll go out to Queens and... I go chill out there. You know, I told you I was hustling and shit out there and my baby mom stayed out there. So I'm out there in Queens. And when I come back the next day, I come back to Brooklyn. I come back with my sister. My sister picked me up and I come back with her. And when I get out the car, I was like, yo, stop at the store. Let me grab some blunts. Cause we about to go chill and smoke. So I said, let me grab some blunts. Stop at the store. So she parked like across the street from the store. I jump out the car and I go, to, I, I'm on my way to the store. The dude from the spot that I told you I was cool with, he coming out of the store. And when he see me, it's like his whole demeanor changed. The nigga's eyes got big and it looked like I scared him. From the, the best way I can describe it, without knowing what he was thinking, it looked like he got scared when he saw me. He spun back around and dipped back in the store. So I saw that. But I didn't think much of it because, like I said, me and this dude was cool. And in my understanding, we had no issues. So I didn't know if what I saw was correct. So I go in the store and I'm like, yo, what's up? I was glad I saw him so I could tell him about what his peoples had just done the day before and to see if he knew about it and if he would check these niggas. So I was like, yo, what's up, man? Like, I'm glad I see you, this and that. And he like, he's acting like he's looking at potato chips and shit. And he had a bag in his hand for whatever he just bought. But it's like he's looking to get something else. And I was like, yo, your people, they done some bullshit yesterday, da 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 da. And I'm trying to tell him the story. And the first thing he said out of his mouth, yeah, I know them niggas dead. So I keep talking because I don't know he means literally. I'm thinking he's saying like he's cutting them niggas off. You know how niggas be like, yeah, them niggas dead. I don't fuck with them niggas no more. That's what I'm thinking he's talking about. And I'm like, what? Yeah, like, that's good. You don't need niggas like that around you because them niggas, you know, they could have just started a whole big situation between us over nothing. And he was like, yeah, now he's kind of looking at me because he realized that I kind of went over them niggas' dead statement and didn't know what he was talking about. So he's looking at me now, like he look in my eyes while he's talking to me because now he's saying, maybe this nigga ain't got nothing to do with this and he don't know what I'm talking about. And he was like, yo, yeah, that's what I said. Them niggas is dead. I'm like, dead? Like, what you mean, dead? And he was like, they got killed last night. And I'm like, what? And he was like, yeah, right there on the corner of the block. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. So now, all of that information that happened up to him spinning around in the store is making sense. So I'm like, yo, y'all know who done that shit? Because now I can tell that he don't know. And he's probably thinking I have something to do with this shit. But I really didn't. So I'm like, y'all know who done that shit? And he was like, yeah, yeah, we got an idea. We was beefing with some niggas from a spot up the block. You know what I'm saying? About them kind of like trying to steal our customers and shit. And we felt like it came from them. And I'm like, oh, all right. And I'm like, damn, that's crazy. Like, that's crazy. The shit just happened with my peoples yesterday. And now that shit happened. I just hope you ain't thinking nothing like that. He was like, nah, nah, nah. It ain't nothing like that. Like, we know what time it is. We know what time it is. So I'm like, all right, cool. I know I can't explain nothing else to him. I can't sit there and try to 
call people in Queens to let them know I was out there and shit. So I just left it at what it was. So I said, all right, cool. So I get what I'm getting. I go back to the car. As soon as I get in the car and I tell my sister, like, yo, guess what? And I'm trying to tell her. She was like, after I explained to her that them niggas got killed from the city, because I told her about that situation. And she was like, that's why that nigga looked at you like that and ran back in the store. So now I see that she recognized the same exact thing that I recognized and I wasn't tripping. She was like, so I'm like, yeah, I saw that. And I was like, and I felt like, you know, he done that on some, I, he don't know what type of way this shit came from type shit. And she was like, yeah, so that nigga, he, he got scared when he saw you. He thought you was coming at him. And I was like, yo, that's crazy. I'm just hoping these niggas fit, figure that shit out because it didn't come from us as far as I know. But I go back to the crib and my brother is there and I start talking to him. I'm like, yo, you ain't have no situation last night as far as that, right? Because I'm going to tell you something about my brother. Before he started getting high and even while the time he was getting high, like my brother was in the streets heavy and he know mad niggas in the street, like N.A. Rock, like a lot of no strand niggas fuck with my brother. A lot of LG niggas fuck with my brother. Everywhere they fuck with him, cause my brother don't went to war with mad people. He went to war with Lefferts Projects, went around there throwing rocks at these niggas' buildings and busting niggas' windows because he felt like they had something to do with our house getting burnt down. And then he wound up fighting, standing out there fighting half of them niggas after they came outside mad. But anyway, he was well known in the streets. So it's no question in my mind that if my brother wanted that shit to happen, he could have had it happen. And from the way it happened, like, the way niggas told me the story, like, it seems like it was just kind of weird. Because one of the dudes that was standing out there was cool with my brother. And him and my brother was peoples. And when the niggas pulled up on these niggas that killed them, they pulled up in the truck, jumped out the truck, and just started gunning these niggas. The nigga that was cool with my brother never even got looked at. He's standing here witnessing a murder, two murders. And... They never even looked at him. One of the dudes took off running. The truck pulled off. You heard shots up the block. Bong, 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 bong. A few seconds later, the truck come back and pick up the other dude who was still standing there gunning the other dude down that was on the ground already. And they jumped in the car and they dipped off. So that's the way that's like I heard that whole story went. And the dude that was standing out there, like I said, that was cool with my brother. They never even turned their head towards him. So... That all sounded suspicious. They were standing on the corner with my brother's friend. Yeah, I knew everybody damn near off that whole block because I was there long enough. I used to cut the kids' hair for school, so a lot of the parents knew me. I would cut their kids' hair for school for damn near nothing, like fuck shit up. I used to cut hair. So I would sit like, out on the stoop in my front yard and I'd tell the parents, bring your kids, I'm going to hook their shits up for school. I would cut their shits up. This is when niggas was getting names and arrows and all that shit in their heads, and I would do all of that for them. And... So the parents on there knew me and said, I knew everybody from the block. But the dude that was standing out there with the two dudes that got killed was peoples with my brother. I knew him as well. I'm just not mentioning names because all of this shit is like a situation that happened a few years ago. But a lot of that shit was unresolved. But anyway, he was standing out there with a dude that was cool with my brother. And he was from that block. So the dudes that pulled up nine times out of ten didn't know him as well. All they knew was they had two targets that they were coming to get. And that, that was the two dudes that done that shit to the gate that day. Because that happened that night. And my brother, though, when I went to him, he swore up and down like, nah, I ain't had shit to do. I was like, I'm hoping you're telling the truth, nigga, because we got to live on this block. And, you know, if some situation is jumping, we need to know that. And he was like, Sal, I'm telling you, I wouldn't have done that. Like, I didn't have nothing to do with that. If them niggas would have got got, it wouldn't have been on this block. Like, I'm telling you, just trust what I'm telling you. So, from all accounts of what he's saying, he didn't have nothing to do with it. And I, I, I had to respect that. As crazy as it sounded, as weird as it was to me, and how it played out, from his words, he didn't have shit to do with it. So, like I said, I couldn't do no more than disrespect it. I'm like, all right, then. So, we should still be comfortable. Even though I told you I don't connect the dots with this other nigga and saw how he didn't really know... So I'm on point, but at the same time, him telling me he had nothing to do with it made me feel like I hope these niggas figure it out and don't wind up trying to take us to war because I really wouldn't have wanted to go to war with these niggas. I'm going to tell you some real shit because the dude that ran that spot one day, he, um, like I said, me and him was cool. We used to bet on the Bulls 
that, that's when the Bulls and them was popping. We used to bet on their games and all of that. So he took me in his crib one day when I went to go pay for a bet. I think he won one of the bets, and I went to go pay. He was like, yo, come here for a sec. And he took me in the crib. And when I say this nigga showed me ammo that you could have put niggas to war with, like you could have loaded up and got like the the the, 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 the army niggas, like the National Guards. He had enough shit in there to, to arm these niggas best. Guns, all type of guns, all type of assault rifles. And he was like, yeah, nigga, like, we ready for war. So if you ever got in a situation, like, nigga, let me know. You can always come here and snatch something. And I'm like, all right, that's peace. But anyway, I was like, yeah, we gonna have to be on point. But at the same time, if you guarantee me you had nothing to do with that, then we should be good. So he was like, yeah, I ain't had nothing to do with that. So a year goes by and nothing else come out of this situation. So... This a year later, if we fast forward, I'm telling you now on how my brother, like on two to three different occasions, came in the house saying gunshots just went off while he was out there. One of the times I heard it, went to the front door with my shit, and I'm looking out the door. I see him laying behind a car on the other side of the street, and I'm thinking he shot. I'm like, yo, I started to step out the door, and he gets up and look around, then come to the house. And I'm like, what the fuck happened? He was like, I don't know. I just stepped out. And gunshots went off. And I'm like, that's crazy. So I'm like, nah, this shit's starting to seem like some weird shit. And it's like, they're gunning for you. When you're not on the block, ain't shit going on. When you're on the block, all of a sudden, niggas are shooting. And he was like, I know, I know. So I hollered at my peoples again. And they said, nah, if it is, we don't got shit to do with that, Sal. Like, it ain't us. So I'm like, all right, it got to be some other shit he probably don't got into. Because I, I'm almost sure now that it's aimed at him. But anyway... I, I respect their words. So this night was that I told you he got killed, run, I'm in the crib. Was your brother still running around robbing shit at that time? Yeah, he was still getting hot. So nine times out of ten, there's no telling what he was into. You know when a nigga on that type of time, it's, you could be into a little bit of anything. So I'm feeling like it could be coming from another direction. It probably ain't got nothing to do with uh, the dude from the spot right here. So... Anyway, I'm telling him, like, yo, you need to fall back. You need to chill. Like, stay away from over here if you have to. But, you know, every time you over here is the only time them shots going off. So he was like, I know, but we could never figure out who the fuck is shooting. Like, niggas will come dump a few shots and dip off. It was more like warning type shit. Because when you really after a nigga, you don't keep shooting from the corner of a block and dipping. You come right up on him. And that's what they was doing. They was, like, shooting down the block. They wasn't, like, coming up on him and hitting him. So... I'm like, it's like some old warning type shit or whatever. It could have been still saying the same shit. Like, yo, you cool on this block, but get your brother off the block. Is what I felt like it could have been too. Because long as I was out there, I used to be on the stoop. I used to walk to the store. I used to be everywhere out there and nothing. As soon as my brother come home or come around with us, because he was staying there. But you know how when you in the streets, sometimes you don't come home three or four nights or a week at a time. But every time he came around, shots went off. So it was like they wasn't trying to hit him, but they were trying to tell him, stay the fuck off the block, nigga. Like, we're not trying to do nothing to you because of your peoples, but you keep coming around here like you disregarding the fact that we don't want you over here right now. Basically, kind of, to me, saying still, it might be something with that spot because they don't want to harm him, but being that they don't know where that shit came from, they don't want him on the block either. So, I felt like it could have been something related to that. But anyway... I couldn't say for sure, so I can't make no type of move. But anyway, I, um, the night he got killed, I told you, I'm sitting in a room, and I'm just reading the Bible, and I felt like it was talking about him, telling me some shit was going to happen to him. So I said in my head, I got to start taking this dude with me just to get him off the block. Whenever he's here, I'm going to dip out the Queens, and I'm going to take him out there, let him start getting some money, try to get him off of that getting high shit, and get him smoking herb more and shit. And I told him that. I was like, nigga, like, you need to stop this getting high shit. That shit played out now. You know what I'm saying? Like... Everybody done that shit when it first came out damn near. But now, nigga, you know the effects of this shit. Like, leave that shit alone. So he was like, yeah, that's what's up. I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to start going with you and shit like that. But the crazy shit is sometimes when you get a warning about some shit or some shit come to you, you can't wait to act on that shit. That night, like, while I'm sitting in the room, a few minutes later, my brother knocked on the door and was like, yo, your people's outside. And I go out there and he was like, yo, what up, nigga? Like, get dressed. Come with me. I'm about to go get high. I'm about to go chill. And I'm like, bet. So I go back in the crib 
instead of me just remembering what I just said and what just happened, I supposed to told him, yo, get in the car, you're going with us. I don't say that. I snatch up some clothes, change up, go, on, go outside and get in the car. And right before I left, my brother came out the house and like flagged me down and was like, yo, yo, hold on, hold on. He was like, yo, give me a few dollars. I'm gonna go get me a beer or something. And I'm like, bet. So I gave the nigga a few dollars. That was like my last warning to probably save my brother's life. Like that shit fucked with me for a long time. Because I posted at that point, but like, nah, we about to go get high, nigga, get in the car. Don't ask me why I never said that. Like why that shit didn't register in my mind that he might not even be safe through that night. But sometimes the only way I justify that shit now is that sometimes you can't change events that's meant to happen. Like if something is supposed to happen, it's going to happen and trying to alter those shits can throw everything else out of whack. I got another story I'm gonna tell you about that shit in North Carolina where I threw some shit out of whack with some shit that should have happened and I stopped it and some worse shit happened. But anyway, I um I I I give him some a few dollars and we dip off. And we go around to LG and we sitting out there in front of the projects. He was like, yo, roll this up. So I rolled a blunt up and he was he went over there to holler at some shorty. So while he over there hollering at the shorty, I rolled a blunt up and I spark it. And he come back over there and we hitting the blunt, but out of nowhere, like a cold chill shot through my body. And I just got like this fucked up feeling over me. And I'm like, yo, I want to go home. And he was like, what, nigga? And I was like, yeah, run me to the crib, nigga. So he was like, why? We just got out here, like, we supposed to be chilling and whatnot. And I was like, I don't know. I just got this bad feeling, and I don't even want to be out here no more. I don't even feel it no more. Like, my vibe just changed. So he was like, all right, ride with me around the corner first. So we go around the corner, and when we pull around the corner, we pull up to a bunch of dudes standing out here on the corner. Now, this is probably, like, about a half an hour to maybe 45 minutes after he picked me up. Oh, and this is the part I forgot to tell you. When my nigga picked me up, when we ride and I started telling him about the situation, I'm like, yo, I feel like some shit going on with my brother. Like, at least two or three different occasions, niggas came out here and shot on the block while he out here. And he was like, what? Like, yo, that's crazy. He was like, yeah, man, I just lost my uncle too. Not too long ago, my uncle got killed. And he was like, that shit fucked me up. You know what I'm saying? So I know what you're talking about. But that was like the end of our little conversation at that moment. So we dip off. And now while he pulled around the corner, like I said, this may be a half an hour to 45 minutes after he picked me up. We hit that corner around the corner where he where he stay at. And this, this dude standing out on the block. And I know damn near all of these niggas, but all of them is dressed in black. Like every last one of them got on black outfits. And I peeped that, but it didn't mean nothing to me at the moment. So I get out the car and they was like, yo, what up, what up, what up, dapping niggas up and whatnot. And they was like, yeah, nigga, we about to turn up and out of that. It wasn't turn up at that time, but whatever the word was, that's what they was talking. And I'm like, nah, I'm going to go to the crib. And they was like, what? Like, why you going? He was like, I know, I just told this nigga. He talking about he don't got the energy for it. Like his vibe changed or whatever. And I, at first he was coming to chill. So they was like, oh, all right, that's what's up. You know, I respect that. So anyway... Uh, we spoke to them niggas, get back in the car, and he driving me home. When he driving me home, I tell him, stop at the store right here. We stop at the store, and when we go in the store, two ambulances come dipping by, speed, and wong, wong, going towards, uh, what's that, Brookdale Hospital, ain't it? So, they going towards the hospital. And I tell them, I make a joke. I've been making this joke my whole life. Them motherfuckers probably going to get some donuts, or they get a ship change. They trying to hurry up and get back. I used to make this joke my whole life, like say that little shit about cop cars, ambulance, and all of that. And when I was younger, though, this dude said to me, an old head said to me, he was like, yo, I used to joke about ambulance and cop cars and all that until one day I needed one. And then I realized it wasn't no joke. But like I said, I have been making this joke my whole life, even though I had heard those words from that man before I used to make this joke. And... It never stopped me from still saying a little shit about them with their with their shits in siren mode. But at that moment, that man's words came back to me crystal clear. And it hit me so hard, it made me recant my statement out loud, not in my head like, nah, don't joke like that. Out loud, I said, yo, I can't jo- I shouldn't joke about them because somebody really probably need them people right now. I don't even know. My brother was in one of those ambulance dying. So I... I pay for my stuff get in the car and i go back to the crib as soon as i get out the car that my man up he pulling off 
niggas just run up on me like, yo, Sal, your brother just got shot out here. Your brother just got shot out here. And I'm like, what? It was like, yeah, he just got shot. The ambulance just left. So I, I flagged my man down and he backed up. He was like, yo, what's up? And I said, yo, these niggas just told me my brother just got shot out here. Take me to the hospital. And he was like, I bet. So I get back in the car with him to take, for him to take me to the hospital. And before I said, yo, stop at my sister house. I had another sister that stayed up the road. We sisters by, by um, fathers, different mothers. I said, drop me up, stop me up here first to let her know so she could contact the rest of the family. And we can, um, then I go to the hospital. So they was, he was like, all right. So he drove me up here. We get almost to my sister house and we pass my brother walk into the store. I mean, walk into my sister house and he's crying like hysterically. This is my other brother, my youngest brother. He's crying hysterically. So I'm like, hold up, dude, that's my brother. That's my brother. So he slowed the car down and I look out the window and I'm like, yo, James, I'm calling my brother. But you know, when you in a state of shock, he witnessed this whole shit. So really, he's in a state of shock. So I'm yelling his name, yelling his name, and he don't even hear me. So I'm yelling, James. I was like, hit the horn. This nigga hit the horn. And he's like, now he can hear it, but he's not even looking. He's like peeking out the corner of his eye, crying. His shoulders going up and down. He's upset. So I jump out the car. I was like, yo, stop the car. He stopped the car. I jump out. It's not until I got in front of him, grabbed his shoulders, and I shook him. I'm like, yo, James. And his head rolled back. His whole body shook. His head rolled back, his eyes closed, and then they opened back up. And when they opened back up, I could tell he finally see that it's me. And he was just started crying. He's like, saw me. And that nigga grabbed me and started crying. He was like, yo, they killed me. They killed him. They killed him. He gonna die. He gonna die. I'm telling you, Selby, he gonna die. And I'm like, why you say that? And he was like, man, blood came out of his mouth and his nose. And they say when that happened, the person is gonna die. They shot him one time in his face, too. And this and that. So I'm like, what? So he was like, yeah, Selby. And I was like, yeah, go in the house and tell them what's going on and tell them to bring you to the hospital. I'm on my way to the fucking hospital right now. Like, I meet y'all there. So I tell my man, I get back in the car and I tell my man what he just told me. And the other, um, at the moment, he didn't tell me what else happened. But later, he wound up telling me that even when he ran outside after he heard the shots and saw my brother laying in the street, he ran outside to go try to help my brother and niggas started shooting again like gunshots started going off again but it was nobody outside so he felt like the shots had to be coming from one of the roofs on the block because he said the bullets was pinging down around him and my brother so he said he dropped my brother and ran back in the house he was holding my brother's head he said he dropped him and ran back in the house because he was scared that he was going to get hit and <laughs> he said while he was in the house, he like, damn, my brother out there dying and I'm scared about my life. So he said, he just said, fuck it. And went back outside and like was holding my brother and telling, like yelling, call the ambulance, call the ambulance. So next thing you know, the ambulance come, the ambulance dropped my brother because shots started going off again while they taking him to the ambulance. They dropped him once, dipped behind the ambulance. Then they finally shot, the shot stopped. So they pick him up, throw him in the ambulance and they take him out of there. So all of this happened in front of my other brother that I told you was hysterical and upset. So anyway, I get to the hospital. When I get to the hospital, I'm sitting up in there and I'm trying to figure out what's going on. His girlfriend is there. And his girl was like, he going to be okay, I think. He going to be okay. He squoles my hand right before they took him out the ambulance. He grabbed my hand and squoles it real tight. But <clears throat> I'm like, that sounded good to me. But I know sometimes that'd be that last little like last little bit of life in you and but i'm holding on to what she's telling me saying damn hopefully he make it through this shit because my brother been through some shit like some real shit but he almost died plenty of times but this time i'm like hopefully he make it through this shit again so we out there chilling and my brother and my other sisters and come to the hospital i'm waiting for my man to come in the hospital that dropped me off he never came in a hospital and to this day I never saw him again and that joint just tripped me out because this was my people's peoples and I never seen him again since that day and it was kind of crazy to me like I started putting together all of the shit that I told you happened that night where as far as I went around the corner saw all these niggas dressed in black and I don't know what happened and then my brother told me from what people described on the block the dudes that hit him up at first was dressed in black the niggas that ran up on and hit him up so I, I, I don't know why or how that could have came but i felt like you know if my man had any type of situation with those people from that spot the, the best they probably told him was 
yo, get your people from over here. Because if you come out there while this shit going on, I don't know what the hell could happen. Like, there's no way possible to save his brother, but we don't want to harm him. And we, nine times out of ten, he's going to run out there for his brother while this shit is going on. And if it goes bad from there, we can't do nothing else. So, to later, that's the mentality I felt like. My nigga came and got me from over there because he couldn't stop what was going to happen. All he could do was try to get me to safety. And anyway, um, like I said, I've never seen him after that, but I'm in the hospital. And after a while, my other brother called my sisters. Then the doctor come outside and he like, uh, Jackson family, we go over there. He was like, yeah, we did everything we could. He's dead. And he didn't like pull us to the side. He didn't do none of that. He just said this shit out loud once he called our name. And I blacked the fuck out. Like, I went bananas on that doc to try to get to him and everything. It was cops in there. They pulled me back. They was like, calm down. You're going to get arrested. You're going to get arrested. And you don't want to do that after what's going on. We know you upset, but calm down. But I'm like, yo, you could have said that shit a whole lot better. You could have pulled us to the side of anything. I'm just mad, mad, but I'm taking that shit out on him. Like, you see this shit every day, but this is a family member we just lost. And you're saying that shit like it ain't nothing. So I was just upset. You said that was but, Brookdale? Yeah, Brookdale Hospital. So, anyway, after that shit, I wind up, you know, I, I left the hospital. I left my brother and all of them up in there, and I just wandered the streets. Like, I walked around for a long-ass time, just fucked up, like, in a zone, because this brother that got killed, like, that was my closest family member to me you know what i'm saying like you know you love your whole family but then there's the one that you just bonded with and this nigga like took me under his wing since i was little and he always to me he was like my pops because schooling and everything that i learned from the streets and about the streets came through him you know what i'm saying fighting and all of that shit like he showed me that like he he, he was the one who who built me as far as being a man man and now he gone like that shit threw me for a loop so i'm just walking the streets trying to clear my head but i'm fucked up really you know what i'm saying like to this day that shit still dragged me but you know that's 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 part of losing somebody you care about but yeah he um after that shit happened though you know a bunch of shit went on like i told you they wind up that night they took us to the police station. They asking us all these questions and we don't know what the fuck going on. How the fuck do we, you know what I'm saying? All we know, we just lost a family member. And, but the word, the, the cops shot us. They said, we heard this already from the streets that your brother's killing was supposed to be in retaliation for two dudes that got killed over there on that block a year ago. So I'm like, where the fuck would they have heard that from? And who would have told them some shit like that? But I come to find out that somebody that was talking up in my brother's, that was speaking to them in my brother's thing, they wind up finding that person's body in a dumpster like two weeks later. So all of this shit I felt is connected to that. Can't prove nothing, but all of this shit I felt was connected to that. And then I bumped into somebody, one of the dudes that I told you that knew my brother from, from LG. I bumped into him. It was my my dude. I was locked up with this dude, but I didn't even know he knew my brother. On God, I didn't know he knew my brother. So I bumped into him on the street probably about a month later. And I'm telling him about what happened with my brother. And I'm telling him the whole story. He was like, what? Like, yo, that's fucked up. Like, nigga, you know who done it? And I'm like, it's shit that's in the air, but I don't know for sure. And he was like, what's your brother's name? And I told him my brother's name. Because I was locked up with him. I didn't know him from the street. I told him my brother's name. And he was like, what? He said, you talking about such and such and such and such? And he described my brother and everything. And I'm like, yeah, that's my brother. He was like, oh, hell no. Nah. He said, yo, that's my nigga. <clears throat> so we started building. And he was telling me how him and my brother was in the process of putting together some shit at that moment. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was like, yo, I was just with him not too long ago, and we were supposed to be putting some shit together. And, like, I was wondering why he ain't get back with me in this long. And he was like, yo, what's up? Like, nigga, nah, some shit gotta happen. I don't give a fuck if it's just in the air. Let's make something happen. So he said, like, any names involved, let's make this shit happen. I don't give a fuck whether it is or not. Like, nah, some shit gotta happen about behind that. But this is why I told you that whole story that led up to where 
I was telling you the mind space I was in as far as the universe talking to me because I made a promise during that time that if you get me now, then I wouldn't go back. But if you don't get me now, then I'm going to be the worst person you ever seen. So at that moment, you know what I'm saying? I had already came to the conclusion that, all right, I, first of all, I really didn't know where it came from. But second of all, I had said, you know, sometimes shit happens. You ain't always responsible to be the, the as crazy as this might sound, you, you don't always got to be responsible for people getting their just due. If it's meant to happen, they're going to get their just due. It don't have to be at your hand. So that's the mentality I had. And I know that sounds crazy to people that live a street life because, you know, family members, friends and all of that. I don't roll for friends and everything before this event and after this event. But at that moment, the headspace that I was in was telling me, you have a choice and you're not going to be judged for either way you choose. But the choice that is is preferred is that you let karma work its work its uh its its magic so that's the conclusion i came to and when i told my nigga that right there that day on the street this nigga looked at me it looked he looked you know how you look at somebody with disgust and like you no know, the look on his face like i never forgot it like he looked at me and the nigga just walked off from me he ain't say not near another word he just walked away from me and that bothered me because I know how he felt the same way I would have looked at somebody if they was telling me that at one point in my life, I would have felt that same way and looked that same way. But I never spoke to him again. Like he, he it was nothing in his mind that registered that what I was saying was OK, that I was willing to just let karma work his magic. He didn't want to hear that. So before he said something disrespectful or turned our relationship into some sideways shit he just looked at me how he felt and walked off and to this day like i said you know that shit is still inside of me but i do understand that life is like that you ain't you ain't always gonna be the author of, of the outcome so i kind of accepted that in that situation it was what it was but yeah man let me ask you this though when your brother like was you at a point where even though you and your brother was close was you at a point where it's like cause I've I've had friends and family members that they were so out of control getting high in the streets that you know just them being around was stressful. Just exactly. them being around was stressful. It's like, yo, you bringing, you bringing negative stuff around. You got people wanting to kill you. You got people that hate you. You robbed this person. You robbed that person. Now you coming around me. Like, I've been around these type of individuals. And I know, I've known individuals that, you know, you could start. You remember that Wu-Tang song? Remember that song? And I'm not saying this about your brother, but this is how sometimes people start viewing uh, troublesome people. Like that um, song, it was on the old Dirty Bastard album where he was like, he was talking about the, the God body dude. And he was like from 5%, all he knew was one to 10. He loved the gods with his heart, but his soul was filled with sin. A fierce lion, never leave a crib without the iron. And he says some shit when he come through. Niggas be looking out, hoping he gets shot and taken out. Or locked the fuck up in Brooklyn House, in PC, on a liquid diet. But he was louder than a riot. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, sometimes yeah. some niggas is so wild and so crazy. Motherfuckers be sitting around hoping they get locked up. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Just to get them niggas out there, out there, out the, to get that stress out of here. But it's crazy though, bro. And, and and another question I wanna ask, you know, even though your brother is gone, back to the essence, do you feel he was telling you the truth about that situation? If you want my honest opinion from everything that took place that night and how the situation was described to me, and even the truck that pulled up that night. 
it wasn't described as far as brand wise, but the color of the truck, the windows, the tinted windows and everything. If you want my honest opinion, I felt like he lied to me. I felt like he that was that did come from him. I felt like the people that done that was cats that could have been related to us as far as um, street wise because the description of that truck was familiar to me and it was people that fucked with my brother like I said they didn't describe the brand but just telling me it was a black truck with tinted windows I knew no I can't say 100% sure he lied to me but like little pieces of stuff always had that doubt in my mind whether he told me the truth or not and this is why like I said I can't I, one thing I know about my brother this is why I stood on the fact that it didn't come from him because one thing I knew about my brother is even if it meant the world was going to explode he wouldn't lie to me that's something that I felt my whole life the worst truth that he could have told me I felt like he would tell me that truth so in light of that is why I respected the fact that he was telling me no cell like I didn't have shit to do with that and who you like, said was living in the house at that time you said what who was living in that house that they tried to run in it was me my brother my two of my brothers, I had two of my brothers there because it was me and a dude that had the studio. Me and him was renting that house. And it was um, it was mad rooms in there. It's probably like a six room house. So me and him had the first floor. And we had the studio on the second floor, but it was still two bedrooms on the second floor. So I had two of my brothers that, you know, their situation wasn't the best at that time. So I let them come and stay there. So it was me and my man whose studio it was and my two brothers. And my brother had his girl there with him. You know, the one that got killed. He had a girl there with him. And the crazy shit, I'm going to tell you some more crazy shit. She was pregnant by him when he got killed. This is the part I ain't even tell you. When she, when he squeezed her hand, I felt like he passed his life into her. Because my brother got shot right under his eye. One of the bullets went right under his eye. He had a, a hole in his face right under his eye. He, she was pregnant with him with a son. Do you know his son came out? with a birthmark in the exact spot where my brother got shot at and he looks like a splitting image of my brother mm. so I felt like that squeeze wasn't telling her that I'm gonna be okay I felt like that squeeze was him passing his life onto his seed mm. and the crazy shit is I had lost contact with Shorty um, his baby moms we lost contact because I, I, I couldn't even like see myself I left all that shit everything I had accumulated in life and everything I left it in that spot I couldn't even go back to that house you know I went back like maybe once or twice but I kind of left that spot I left that house I couldn't do it like I, every time I went in there that energy was still there like that shit broke me down and I wound up just cutting ties with all of that shit because it was just memories of something that I didn't want to remember you know what i'm saying like i was fucked up for real and I, I i wasn't in a good space so i couldn't keep attaching myself to those memories or i felt like i would have like lost it so I, I wound up leaving that spot so i lost contact with shorty and everything and didn't get back in contact with her to probably like maybe three years ago and i'm gonna tell you how we got back in contact my cousin was out in Brooklyn, out in Brownsville. Cause I got peoples in Brownsville and everything. My cousin was out there and she came across his son. And when she saw him, she was like, this nigga look like family. So he trying to push up on her. He like throwing shots at her, but she stopped him. She was like, nah, come here for a minute. And she started talking to him and she was like, what's your name? And when she said his name, he was named after my brother. And she was like, wait a minute, who your father? So he was like, I never met my father. My father got killed before I was born. And she was like, was his name the same as yours? And he was like, yeah. And she was like, you my cousin. And that's how we got back in touch. I had never even seen my nephew all of them years. And at the time we got back in touch, what, he was like, 
19, he had a little family of his own and everything. Like, And he had all questions from that side of the family. He never had met that side of the family. We had lost all contact with her. She wound up moving out to D.C. and everything. So we had lost all contact with her and him. And just got back in touch with her and him a few years ago. But, yeah, I, I, I just... It was always that question in there, man. And like I told you, one of the songs that them niggas put out under the woo, it, it sounded like, you know, they was kind of talking about that situation. And I, I, I always connected that because, like I said, the nigga Jizza was related to that spot. And I, 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 I just like, you know how when shit happened, I don't give a fuck if it has something to do with it or not. Your brain like put all pieces of any type of information in place or it tries to put stuff in place whether the shit really fits or not but i always felt like you know what i'm saying like damn is this song actually talking about that situation and this and, and whatnot because it sounds like it could have been but yeah man that's just that trauma you know what i'm saying because that's how some good motherfuckers died that ain't have nothing to do with a bad situation and that's how some bad motherfuckers live they didn't have nothing to do with that situation that did have something to do with the situation because you didn't have enough information to say yes and make a move or you had enough information and or you thought you had enough information and you said yes and it wasn't even supposed to happen because that shit wasn't even tied to none of that so me like I said with the space I was in at that time anyway but also I, that, I'm gonna tell you the truth like even with the space I was in at that time, if I could have probably got information that it was a guarantee, not no maybe or nothing, then I probably would have locked in on that. I can't even tell you that. Only thing I knew at that time that I wasn't 100% sure. And that block, it got spun on a few times, you know what I'm saying? By other people. It wasn't even, it didn't come for me. But it was people tearing that block up behind that shit because they just didn't, give a fuck whether it was connected or not and I just was hearing about that block getting tore up and I knew that was coming back from people that didn't give a fuck whether they can put a positive on it or not they was just like fuck that even if it's a thought it's going to happen you so said yeah, that, that was all in the star right yeah that's in the star 